Hey everyone, Eric here. And today I want to share with you an easy way to make a complex looking curved fence like the one behind me using just one extension called Path Copy. So if you haven't heard of it or if you haven't used it before, I'm going to walk you through the process right now. It's called Path Copy and it does exactly what the name well, not exactly, but pretty much what the name says, which is copying objects along a path. And we all know how to do this using just the move copy tool and being able to do an array. But when you're working with curved objects or when you have multiple objects, it's going to be a little bit trickier. And so that's why we're going to use, we're going to call upon the help of an extension. So let's just go ahead and do it together now. I've got my fence that I've already built. Um, we're going to do this together. I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. Oh no, it takes some confidence to delete stuff from your model. So let's do it on a simpler example though. Let's just kind of explain how this works before we dive into sort of the construction of something like a fence. I'm just going to take this little object here. Now, one thing I want to do is double check to see before I get started to see whether it's a component. And I also want to know where the axis is because this will play into how the object is arrayed along the curve. The other thing I want to do is I want to make sure that this curve, uh, you know what, maybe we'll just, we'll just start over from scratch here. I'm going to take a curve. Let's start with just one curve. And then what we'll do is we'll do a reverse curve in a second. So let's see, let's start here. And it doesn't really matter the direction this is going. We don't have this aligned to an actual project. But here we go. Let's say I want to take this cube and I want to run it along a curve. Like I said, if you know how to do this originally, you just move and then hit the sort of option or control modifier if you're on PC. And then you can just tell it how many copies, like times four. That's pretty easy, but that's because we're just going on a straight line. So it's a little bit more complex when we're working with curved or complex paths that we want to follow. So to utilize the extension, we just need to think about the object we want to copy and the path we want to copy along. In this case, I'm going to select the path first. I'm going to find it under extensions and path copy. And then what it's going to do is you can see a couple things is it says select the group. It's telling you what to do. Select the group or component you want to copy. And then if you look over here, select the distance between them. So if I select this cube here, if I click on it, it says six inches. Well, that's probably not the right amount of spacing. So we can try typing in just without, you know, hitting escape, type in something like three feet. Looks pretty good. We could try five feet. So again, we can change our minds as many times as we want. Six feet, two feet. We can keep playing with options until we find something that we're happy. And then as soon as we switch to another tool or orbit, then all of a sudden the command is broken and we cannot change that. Of course, it's easy enough. If you do change your mind later, you can always come over here and say select if you're working with components, as you probably should in this case, because they repeat. Select all instances, accept that one, and delete it. Now, one thing I wanted to point out, which is why I mentioned working with components rather than groups, is because you may want to double check before you array an object under model info components show component axis. So this is kind of important because Here's the component axis right here. It's on the corner. So if I hit x-ray mode, it might be a little bit easier to see. It's right there on the corner. If you go to lay that out, so I have a sh keyboard shortcut, so I'm going to go ahead and do that one more time. You can see that what it's doing is it's choosing its spacing. It's choosing its alignment where the axis is. So in this case, what it's doing is it's putting it on the inside of the curve. So if I wanted to do that again, but I wanted my object centered on the curve, then what I would want to do is change the axis to the center. Now, of course, I can always right click and say change axis. It's going to be, for me, a little bit trickier to find that center point because I have to use inferencing. And I'm, for me, I'd rather use a, another extension. And I'll put a link to both of these in the description. So don't worry. It's a free extension. It's called Axis Tools. And it says set origin for selected. I like to do this. I like to use center, center bottom, and click OK. And you can see because I've got my component axis showing, and because I have my x-ray mode showing, you can see my axis moved to right here in the center. So I'm going to run my keyboard shortcut, Shift K, doesn't matter what the, it is for copy. Um, I'm going to actually, sorry, I'm going to select the line first, then run my keyboard shortcut and select my object. And you can see the difference now is now that it's centered on 
the line. So that's exactly kind of how I want to do this. And of course, if you wanted to, you could, this line doesn't have to be flat. It could, it could have a, um, it could go up along the blue axis as well. I'm going to show you if we want to make this a little bit more complicated, what we may want to do is have two lines, but the problem is like a, res a reverse curve. Like maybe you have a property that has, you know, a weird property line. But the challenge is, is that if you, if you select this, you can see that if these lines aren't welded together, then if you select this, you can only do one of these curves at a time. And that's probably going to mess your spacing up because it's almost like doing it one and then you have a gap and then you do it over and it's going to start your spacing over. So you probably want to shift those, shift, hold, uh, select both of them and weld edges. And then if I come over here and I do path copy again command, click this one, you can see there it is. So now not only does it go around this curve, but it turns the corner and comes back around, which is super cool. Now for this next step, we're going to do the fence because that's what I teased you with in the beginning. I'm going to go ahead and turn off show component axis because that was just me saying, if you don't know the components axis, you may want to double check it before you do this step. Select all instances except that one, delete it. And I have two other components here that I'm going to unhide. And these are my, what do you call it? It's going to be like my post and my picket. So what I want is sort of a larger, um, thicker post that you would maybe have less of, and then you'd have something smaller, like a thinner picket, which would sort of be in between the larger posts. So what I'm going to do is do that same thing, only maybe I won't use my keyboard shortcut just to remind you. Extensions, path copy. And I did it the opposite way. You can see, Let pay attention. Select the line first, extension, path copy. Select the object you want to copy. And then what it's going to do is it's going to ask you what the spacing is that you want. Maybe I'll do five feet or maybe six feet in between. So that way I have like a nice round number that I can work with. And it looks okay. We can tighten that up, but let's go with that. Now, the next thing we want to do is take this picket. So do the same thing. Extension, you can see the pattern or the trend here. And I'm going to select the picket. And you can't see it because it says six feet, so it's placing it inside of the one that's already there. In this case, I could try two feet. And it's not really going to keep any critters out, so I might try something like one foot. Or again, if I want like a more like a traditional picket fence, I might want to go to six inches and call that good. So if you kind of look at that, it's a little hard to see because it goes all the way around the corner, around the bend. That's looking pretty good. It's only a three foot high fence, so this is meant to be something like you'd see in a garden. It's not necessarily meant to keep out. Um, larger animals that can jump. So if we want to, we don't have to, this is not necessarily part of this extension, but if we want to put a top rail or a mid rail or a bottom rail on it, we're actually not going to use the extension for that. We are going to just use good old fashioned follow me. So I'm going to say, move this line up off the ground, maybe two inches. And then I'm going to come over here. Sorry, Eric, I don't need you for this. Goodbye. And I'm going to come over here with the rectangle. I'm going to hold. Let's see if I can get my, I might have to sort of rotate around a little bit. There we go. I'm going to hit Option Mac or Control on the PC so that I can orient this the way that I want to. And I'm going to go so it's something like two inches, comma one inch, something like that probably will work. And then let's grab this and select my follow me tool and follow me. So if I want to, I can just triple click the whole thing, make this a component and copy this up to the top. So I want to make sure I hold the modifier so I can copy that up. And if I need to, for some reason, just to keep these from bending, I might want to have an intermediary, but maybe that's too much. Let's see how far do I want? I want that centered. You know, like I do in these videos, fly a little fast and loose. And let's see, I want to get that sort of a little bit more centered. There we go. Let's go with that. I don't even think we need that middle one. I think we're good. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. You can select if you want to. Um, once you've laid all these out, you can see we've got them all, but they're individual. So I would right click this, recommend right clicking it, select all instances. And then I would come over here and say, make that a group. Same thing, select all of these instances and make that. Oops. Select all instances, make it a group, 
Uh, or you can just select everything. If you're only working on a model that doesn't have anything else in it, you can just select everything and then make that a group. Cool thing about that is now I can move this into place or I can stretch it if I wanted to go a little taller, uh, or I can apply a color to it if I wanted to have the fence painted and bring my person over here just so that I can get a sense of scale. And that's it. So you can see I did use two extensions. I did not have to use the extension access tools. I could have just set that one manually, um, but I did think that helped me a little bit to make sure that I was hitting that line exactly centered when I was laying out my pickets and my posts. So that just kind of helped out a little bit, but you could also do that manually, or you can um, be okay with the fact that it puts it on the inside or on the outside of that sort of baseline. So that's it. Like I said, I hope you felt like that was an easy method. To me, that's easy. Now I use this path copy extension for when I want to lay out um, trees, like if I want to do it along the street. They're not always straight. So I want to make, you know, curve around the bend. There's also just, there's a, I don't know what the other uses are, but I think that's your job. Go out there and figure out if you haven't already played around with path copy, um, then give it a shot. Let me know, post it in the comments. What do you use it for? What does it help you with? And um, we'll just kind of keep that conversation going there. So I'm going to let you go. I'm going to say thanks as always for watching. If you learned something new, you can give us that thumbs up or subscribe if you haven't. If you didn't, let us know. Again, we'll keep that conversation going and I will see you next time. Thanks.